some things just raise your hand this is the thing some things have happened to us in our lives some things are are so a part of us that we feel like they're just always going to be a part of us but that's not okay but so sometimes we need the body of Christ to help stand with us to stand in this truth to stand in this new reality so if you would just want Linda to come and stand with you and pray that the Lord touch you and, and set you free but it's your job guys it's your job to settle that matter once and for all the Bible puts it this way in Romans consider yourself dead to sin and alive to Christ so one day the Lord said I want you to look up that verse consider because when we think of the word consider, it kind of just means in our head, like, contemplate on. Like, I'll think about it. Okay, I'll think about the fact that I'm dead to sin and alive to Christ. But that's a really, actually a really bad translation of that word. So what Paul actually meant to say was settle this matter once and for all. Settle it once and for all. Settle the fact that you're now dead to sin and alive to Christ Jesus. And so what our mind does is it wants to operate in this middle ground where we're, where we're not sure. We're not, we're not sure if, if we're still got one foot in sin and one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. And our mind wants to stay there. But, but eventually what will happen to you is you'll be torn apart in that place. You'll be torn apart in that place because fear will always have a, a, a voice in that middle ground. Lies will always have a place in that middle ground. The voice of the enemy will always use your, your body as a puppet to try to animate something that's dead. Okay? But when you begin to operate, I don't care if your body, let's say for example, let me, let me give you an example. Let's say I have a shoulder pain that I can't shake. Okay? Am I going to stand in truth? That in Christ I am completely healed? Am I going to stand in the reality that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed? Okay, let's say I have a voice in my head that says you're nothing. You're always going to be nothing. That promise that God gave you when you're born again, it's never going to come to pass. Trust me, it's never going to come to pass. Okay? The second I give any voice to that, I've just resurrected something that's dead. I've just given the enemy who's a defeated foe some life when he has no life but when I say wait a second in the spirit my shoulders healed in the spirit that promise is already fulfilled I have that already in Christ Jesus said it this way believe that you already what believe that you've already received it what he's doing guys is teaching us to trust in his promises blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. And then faith, when we begin to practice that reality, practice the reality of who we are in Christ based on the Word of God. Okay? Jesus was in a desert about half dead, not, a, not eaten for 40 days. In the most weakest possible place you could possibly be. Like weak, hungry, you know, about to die. But he stood on the word of God, his sword. And the word of God says this. The word of God says that you are sozoed. That you are blameless. You are whole. You are delivered. You are set free. That you're healthy. That you're strong. That you have the mind of Christ. That you're actually the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That you're so one with Jesus that now God wants to use your life to prove that God is real. That's what it means that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when you got born again, your spirit was made one with God's spirit. But the realm of the soul, right, your mind, your emotions, that stayed the same. And that's where God takes your hand and he goes, I want to show you what happened to you when I came into your spirit. I want to show you how I see you now. I want to show you who you really are. And as you behold me, you're actually going to see who you are. As you behold and worship me, as you receive revelation of who I am, everything that I am is going to become everything that you are. And everything that you are is going to become everything that I am. And we actually begin to walk in our inheritance because we're co-heirs with Jesus Christ. What is your inheritance? 
everything that Jesus inherited through his cross and resurrection. Everything that, that he inherited is your inheritance. And the restoration of God's image in you is restored in that way. There is nothing that separates you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. You have to settle that matter once and for all. No matter what circumstances come in your way, no matter what tests. And that is how you begin to rely on the love of God that He has for you. It's finished. So we have to stop asking things of God that He's already given us. And start to preach to ourselves. Start to proclaim over ourselves what He's done for us. So much of what we ask of God, He's already done. And so He's already given us. And He wants us to learn to claim it. To claim it by knowing Him. To claim it by worshiping Him. You know, um, the beautiful thing about our growth with Jesus is it's relational. It's relational. Who's heard of the name and claim it thing? That thing works sometimes because God is faithful to His promises. But if you really want to grow in the character and likeness of Jesus Christ... You simply begin, as Paul says, to look in a mirror and says, today I want to know you and I want to see how you see me. And you begin to just like, like she said, free your day to spend the day with Jesus. While you're washing the dishes, while you're doing your chores, spend the day with Jesus. Talk to me. Get to know him. You know, ask, fall asleep. Uh, fall asleep with him. Okay, have dreams, visions of him. And, and, and spend, and of course, most and most importantly, spend time in his word because this is your sword. This is your sword. This is your truth. This is your foundation. In 1 John 4, 17, okay, it says this is how the love of God will be made complete in you so that you will have confidence on the day of judgment. And then it says in this world you're like him. In this world you're like him. So really what John was saying there is he's saying when Jesus died and rose again, I opened the way that everything that I am can become everything that you are. But here is that, how is that process going to happen? Here's how that process is going to be made complete. You no longer can see yourself as the world has taught you to see yourself. You now have to see yourself only through my eyes. So when the Bible says to regard no one from an earthly point of view, who's the first person that we should no longer regard from an earthly point of view? Who's the first person? Myself. I'm now, I'm not allowed to call myself a victim anymore. I am not allowed to call myself weak anymore. I am not allowed to call myself a thief, a liar, a cheat, any, any of those things anymore. I'm not allowed. You're not allowed in the spirit to call yourself those things, to believe those things anymore. And so how beautiful it is to begin to believe and just say, Jesus, I want, I want you to begin to show me how you see me. I want to begin to, to, to show uh, my wife. I want, I want to begin to see my wife with your eyes. I want to begin to see my children with your eyes. I want to begin to see the world with your eyes. And it's really, really that simple. It's really that simple. And what God will begin to do is he'll begin to just walk you through that process. And that's the Holy Spirit's job. It's the Holy Spirit's job to lead you into all truth. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And so there's something very, very amazing about what Jesus paid for is he paid for for the full image of God to be restored in us. And I was talking to Teresa, like there is no limits to what we can accomplish on earth. You know, we, you want to stop the aging process, stop the aging process. You want to, um, I mean, that sounds crazy, I know. But there, yeah. that, that's not, that, I wanted to say something really crazy. <laughs> I wanted to say something really crazy, but whatever... You want to do in Christ Jesus, you can do. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that we grow in His likeness. Okay? But I'm, I'm just saying, take all the possibilities off your life for what the world says you cannot do. Okay? Take your eyes out of that box and say, God, everything, every destiny that is put on my life, I will accomplish in Jesus' name and start to walk it out in Jesus' name. You want to heal the sick? Go start praying for people. Okay? You want to love the homeless and feed the homeless? Go start loving them. Take, take all the limits off your life and go just start doing stuff. Walking with Jesus and go do it. You know, and um, it takes practice. Who knows that you don't learn to play an instrument in one day? Okay, life in the Spirit takes practice. 
All right? I heard a story of a pastor that said, all right, I'm called to heal the sick. The word says I can heal the sick. He went and prayed for one person, and the person didn't get healed. And so he quit and said, oh, it must not be true. Because God's word says it's true. No. We're renewing our mind. We're renewing our mind. Okay? So we start off by saying, I don't know if this is going to work. God's word says it's true. God, you love this person. I'm just going to pray for you. And you continue, and, and God will start molding you through the process. But it takes you stepping out. If you really want to heal the sick, what do you have to practice doing? You have to start practicing it. Okay? A lot of people want to heal the sick by a, someone going and laying hands on them and like a special gift being imparted to them, and now it's just going to work every time. Is that, if you think about that, is that real growth? Or drive-by healing. Yeah, that's not real growth. God wants you to begin to believe it. God wants you to begin to believe who he says you are. More than you getting some special anointing from an anointed person, which I also believe in impartation. I also definitely believe in that. He wants to take you by the hand and show you who you are. So whatever you guys want to accomplish, whatever vision or dreams, let it be restored to you tonight in Jesus' name. As you broke those contracts, don't just break those contracts. Make new contracts with his promises. Okay? Put your faith in who he says you are. Put your faith in what you can do. And he said you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. He didn't say he's going to do it for you. He said you can do it because your spirit is now one with his spirit. So when God looks at you, he now sees you through the blood of his son. Which means he sees you only as righteous and pure and holy. Well, what if you go and mess up tomorrow, John? What if I go and mess up tomorrow? Guess what? God doesn't change the way he sees you. He says, get up, my son. That's not who you are. He doesn't spank you and says, oh, you're done. You're, f you're good. He says, get up, my son. Let me show you who you are. That's not you who you are. You're not a liar. You're not full of anger. You're not full of fear. You're full of faith. You are righteous. You are whole. You are my beloved you are my priest. You are my king. Or you, we're not Jesus king, but we're the kings of this earth. We're the king. The Bible says it. He's the king of kings. Mm -hmm. And um, he's given us this earth to steward in his image. So when we grow in his image, we grow in our authority because he's given us this earth to take care of. One of my favorite verses, Psalm 115, verse 16 says, The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he's given to mankind. So why did Jesus have to come in flesh? Why did Jesus have to come as a man? Because he had to come as a man. Because God gave the earth to mankind. And we blew it. So as a man, he had to, to take that upon himself. And take the sacrifice for all mankind as a man. And as God's people, we now take the earth back for his glory. We now redeem the time. Okay, We now kick the enemy out of every lie and out of every stronghold that he's taken, and we do it because that's Jesus' inheritance. You know, the Bible says that Jesus' inherit, inheritance is in the saints. Jesus' inheritance is in God's image being restored in me and you. Okay, and well, I'll leave you with that thought. So what is Jesus' inheritance? Jesus' inheritance is in God's image being restored in me and you. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. That's how much he loves us. Yeah. It's not in what we can do for him. It's not right. how, how, you know, how much, whatever, whatever we compare each other to in the church. How many followers we have or whatever stupid crap yeah. that we, we, we look at. Right. It's in God's image being restored in us. That's yeah. Jesus' inheritance. It's so beautiful. I love you guys. It's been yeah. such an awesome night. Yeah.